why is this a sabbatical? Sabbatical. It's a sort of uh, working holiday, isn't it? Now, Mickey knows these guys from way back. Never trust Australians. Benny and Mary are very talented drifters. What do they need Mickey for, then? Because it takes someone very special like Mickey to pull off selling the Sydney Opera House. Yeah, well, I'm telling you now. I could do it. So, um, you still got that mark in place, Albert? No, Mickey thinks it's the last cars. Excuse me. Mickey is not here, all right? Except it. It's too late. The mark is leaving for L.A. in ten hours. We'll phone him. Danny, we're in a cinema. He won't hear me. He just dial it out, man. I'm going to the lobby, all right? Goodbye. Give me some popcorn. Yeah. And a drink. Yeah. We brought you here to cheer you up. You haven't even watched any of them. Uh, I've seen it. You got a punch or something, mate? Just, just, let's just get out. Come on. Try and enjoy the film, Come eh? On. Listen, son, I don't want to ruin it for you. But right at the very end, all five of them get blown up in a boat. Danny! Sorry. 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 We could have found another mark tomorrow. I don't want another mark. I want this one. Why? Because Mickey said it was a lost cause. No. And I think we should sell him the Houses of Parliament. We don't even know who he is yet. Old Buckingham Palace. Danny. I can do big too, you know. I am special. Yeah, I know you are. Well. Anthony Westley. He's a Texan. Made a fortune in something called industrial fastening, whatever the hell that is. And he sold his business eight years ago, netting a profit of nearly $30 million. I like him already. I don't think you would. He sold a property developers, knowing they were going to close down his factory and put all of his people out of work. Uh, he's brash, he's single-minded, and he usually gets what he wants. And he's obsessed with the movie business, specifically movie memorabilia. He recently bought Judy Garland's ruby slippers from the Wizard of Oz from a private collector for two million bucks. Well, go on then. We'll wait here. Yeah, don't be too long. My stomach thinks my throat's being cut. All right. So who's he thinking you are? He thinks I'm a dealer who specializes in finding items for collectors for a finder's fee. All right. You set anything up? I told him I had a contact for movie memorabilia. That's you. Your name is Paul Garrett. Ready? Right. Are you sure we won't go for Nelson's column? Look, you're not in competition with Mickey. You've got to focus by the book. We assess what the mark needs, and that's what we use. Do you understand? Okay. All right. Well, I mentioned it just in case. Howdy! Uh, this is the uh, gentleman I mentioned to you, Paul Garrett. A pleasure to meet you, Mr. Wesley. Likewise. <laughs> I'm sorry it's so late, but I knew you were flying back tomorrow, so I didn't take a chance to come by. Well, to tell you the truth, I'll be glad to get away from this damn rain. So, uh, James here tells me that uh, you deal in Hollywood memorabilia? Yeah, that's right, yes. Uh-huh. You guys like to have a drink? No. You're right, thank you. You got anything that uh, might interest me? Well, 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 well. Right now we're looking at the Rosebud sleigh from Citizen Kane. I thought Spielberg had that. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. But uh, we've got a few interested parties, and he's um looking at the offer, isn't he? Yeah, he'll never sell. You got anything else? What about the original R2-D2? Don't take up much space. Comes with the optional... Lee. Yeah, old hat. The bike from E.T. Lovely little basket on the front. Nah. 
Did you know there's a lot of movies been shot in Trafalgar Square, right underneath Nelson's column? I, I've got a better idea. That maybe you could kind of give him an idea of the things that you're looking for. Well, I am building the biggest museum of Hollywood memorabilia anywhere in the world. And for me, it's old Hollywood. Hollywood in its glory days, when being a star meant something. When L.B. Mayer was running MGM, Marilyn Monroe gave a whole generation a hard-on and seven-year itch. Jimmy Cagney, top of the world, Ma. And Fred Astaire, walking on air. Oh, man, those were the days, right? OK, OK. What about Charlie Chaplin's bowler hat? I got three of those and two canes. Marilyn Monroe's shoes? Which ones? Any of them? I have lots. Well, thanks for coming by. I really do appreciate it. Hey, uh, uh, whoa. Ah. The creme de la creme. The big one. The most Hollywood, Hollywood in the whole Hollywood thingy me jiggy me jig. I didn't want to mention this until I knew we were talking big. I mean, this is something that's going to put your museum on the map. It's huge. Bigger than that. More Hollywood than Hollywood. OK. You ready for this? Yeah. The Hollywood sign. Huh. You did what? Look, Ang. Shouldn't be talking like this. Being before we start, we are grifters. I mean, we should dream the impossible dream. Win the unbeatable fight. Defeat the undefeatable foe. Go boldly where no man has gone before. I mean, any Muppet can sell the Sydney Opera House, but this, this is a Hollywood sign. This is history in the making. This will make us legends. Yeah, yeah. But the Mars gonna be in LA when we're in London. So if you've got a plan, any kind of plan, now would be a really good time to share it with us, yeah? I'll find us a car. Who is this? Scott. Scott, this is Harry Kaplan in customer services. Yeah, listen, we screwed up big time. Yeah, I got people up here punching holes in the walls. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, there was a reservation taken for the British Embassy, all right? Is it on your computer? Oh, Jesus. Okay, listen up. This is for your ears only, okay? Not your co-workers, not your family, not for the person you choose to sleep with. You understand me? Yeah, yeah. I got a guy on his way from Embassy Security. He's level one royal family protection. Now, you give him whatever he wants, OK? Now, Scott. OK, you wait there, Scott. I'm going to give you a reference number for the whole system, all right? OK, Scott, here we go. It's C57007. But do not screw this up. Good day, sir. Good morning. I wonder if you can help me. Right, let's check into the hotel. Start a plan. Wait a second, what do you mean, start a plan? I thought you already had one. That was just to get you all there, wasn't it? <laughs> do you have any idea how much four first-class tickets cost? You've got to speculate to accumulate. Think big, big things happen. We set up a meeting with Wesley at three o'clock, right? So we've got a lot to do. Ash, find out who owns the sign, how we can make this thing work. Stacy, I want you to find us a nice hotel. Albert, find out what makes this guy tick. We need an edge. Oh, 
Okay. Originally, the sign read Hollywood Land, erected in 1923 as an advert for a real estate development. Now, that development went bust in the 40s and the sign was falling to pieces until it was taken up by the Chamber of Commerce, who dropped the last four letters to leave just the word Hollywood. So that's what's there now, huh? No, not exactly. The sign was replaced in its entirety twice, once in the 50s, then again in the 70s. So who actually owns it then? Well, that's where it gets a bit more complicated. The land that is on its own by the city, the Chamber of Commerce owns the licensing rights and the Hollywood Sign Commission maintains and repairs it. The bad news is that the security around the sign is state-of-the-art. Well, it seems our friend Anthony Wesley is more of a player than we thought. He's not only mean, he's also corrupt. When he was in business, he bribed key members of the US government to win defense contracts. Mm, he was a naughty boy then. Just talking with an old friend of mine in the New York Post. Seems one of the senators wouldn't play ball. So he hired a private investigator, had him followed, and found out that he likes young men. Wesley then blackmailed the senator and won contracts with the US Navy for 40 million bucks. So he plays dirty then? Well, you know what? We can play dirty too. Yes, hello. I'm from the BBC in London, and we're doing a documentary about the work of the Hollywood Sign Commission. I wonder if I could talk to the person responsible for the maintenance of the sign? Mr. Hamilton. Absolutely, I'll hold. Mr. Hamilton. Yeah, my name's Yvonne Morgan, and I work for the BBC in London. We're producing a documentary about the marvelous work done by the Commission. And I wondered if you could spare us a little of your time for an interview. Well, actually, I'm in L.A. at the moment. Maybe we could do lunch. One o'clock, then. I look forward to it. A little tacky, don't you think? Here you go, Albert. I should do the job. Right, Ash. Time to get your kit off me, old mate. Oh, oh it's only... Oh. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. <sighs> right. <laughs> yeah, you are. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You? Yeah. 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 Uh, what then? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Fellas, have a good trip? Yes, we did. Uh, uh, scotch. Ah, uh, yeah, make that too. Yeah, I'll tell you what, make it three. <laughs> I can't tell you how intrigued I was by what you said in London. Tell me more. I don't mean to be rude, Anthony, but I'm assuming you understand this has to be completely confidential. Goes without saying. Well, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the Hollywood sign has been replaced more than once. Oh, yes, I am. Right, you knew that. I love this town. If someone breaks wind, I want to know it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we're bringing you this first. The Hollywood Sign Commission are considering replacing the sign again this year. Uh, ever since the press leak, uh, the commission's been you know, a little jittery. What press leak? Last week in the Hollywood Journal. Oh, uh, waiter. Yes, sir. You got a copy of last week's Hollywood Journal? You see, they didn't want this getting out until the deal's been agreed. This must have uh, happened while you were in London. There you go, sir. Right, they know that sign is going to be worth a small fortune to the right bidder. Now, they see this as a way of safeguarding their future. Like Paul says, they want to have a deal in place before they make the announcement. So, um, what are they asking for? They're asking for sealed bids. Twelve specially chosen dealers have been given the opportunity to bid in secret for the original sign, when it takes off. And, uh, you're one of those twelve dealers? That's why we're here. Sealed bids. 
I hate doing business that way. Unless you don't put your bid in until you've seen everyone else's first. You've got somebody that can give us that information? I've got a man on the inside. We think the top bids would be around four to five million dollars. We give our man a blank sheet of paper, he checks the bids, tops it by a hundred dollars or so, and seals it. What's in it for you? 20% of your bid as a finder's fee. 20% of five million dollars? Oh, that's a hell of a lot of money. Yes, it is. I think I'd like to talk with the man on the inside. I'm sorry, but his identity is strictly confidential. Too bad. Maybe see you around. Huh? If I don't see the man on the inside, there is no deal. There is no other way it's going to happen. I'll arrange you for tomorrow. Just want you all to know, right? This, this is just a start, all right? This is the first step on the road to greatness. You see, I think Mickey, personally, is holding us back. Oi, steady. But as your new leader... Uh, hold on. How did you get to be leader? Well, obvious, isn't it? No. Well, haven't we got a say in all of this? A new leader, even a temporary one, has to be elected. Well, I'm bang up for that. OK, hands up. Who picks me? Well, I don't... I personally think we need a new leader. No, nor me. Look, Mickey's going to be gone for months, isn't he? All right, who's going to make all the big decisions? Well, why can't we do that together? Yeah, I mean, what about a democracy, eh? No, we can't. Why not? Tell him, Albie. Well, strictly speaking, he's right. Why? Because when it comes to the crunch, you see, we need a single voice. Yeah, single voice, see? Now, the question is, who? Hello? Albie. No, 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 no. Rule me out, my dear. Thank you very much. Well, after Albie, I would say, Ash, you have the most experience. Hello? Yeah, well, Stacey's got the brains. Well, this is true. Yeah, and am I missing something here? Danny is the inside man, though, isn't he? Well, I tell you what, why don't we have a trial period, yeah? What? Well, let's see how this job goes, and at the end, we'll have a vote. Yeah, OK. Sounds fair to me. In the meantime, in case you've forgotten, we have a con to work tomorrow. I'm going to lunch, Janet. I have a meeting with the BBC from London. They want to interview me. I'll be back around 2.30. Yes, sir. There. That's him. Oh, let's go. Janet. Lovely Janet. Hello, darling. Paul Garrett, BBC. Here to interview Mr Hamilton. Yeah. I'm sorry, he's just left for lunch. Ah, now, he'll be with Yvonne. We can set up while he's doing that, can't we? Excuse me? Sorry, Dove. We're, we're the crew for the interview. Here to set up the lights, the camera, all that too. Yeah. Did we decide on a boardroom or his office? I think we went for the office, didn't we? He wanted to look a little bit more industrious. Yeah, don't they all? I'm sorry, he never said anything to me about this. Yeah, well, that's bosses for you, innit? I mean, my governor never tells me anything. Never. I can be on a job, right? And he phones me up asking me why I'm not somewhere else. I said to him, you know, I can't be there if you don't tell me, can I? Can't be two places at of once. Of course I can't, no. No way. No, no, no. No. We don't actually need him here anyway. We can just set up while he's at lunch with Yvonne. Of course we can. You met her yet? No. Oh, blimey. Right old battle axe. Yeah. Interviewed uh, Blair last week. Had him in tears. He had the Kleenex out. Terrible. Look, Janet, you did know about this interview. Well, yes. Janet, it looks like either your boss or our boss screwed up. Either way, it's left to us poor wage slaves to sort this whole thing out by showing the kind of decision-making and initiative that they can only dream of. So you show us where the office is, we'll tell him you saved the day, and any luck, we should be out here by tea time. What do you say? I'm sure it will be fine. The elevator's right there, third floor. Lovely, lovely. Uh, when the producer and director turn up in the next 10 minutes or so, 
When they ask for Mr. Hamilton, yeah, don't tell him he's not here, OK? Because they'll start spouting on about deadlines, go off for another three-hour lunch, we'll never see him again, will we? No, no, no. You're never ending, isn't it? Never, never. So you just send them up, we'll sort them out, keep it all sweet. What do you say? By the way, you have got great legs. And it is such a waste you keeping them behind this desk. <laughs> <laughs> all right, see you, Janet. Miss Morgan called. She asked me to tell you that she's on her way, but she is running a few minutes late. Thank you. Hi. How can I help? We're here to see Mr. Hamilton. He's expecting. Oh yes. Uh, third floor, first office on your left. Thank you. So, just telling Richard that you're interested in backing our bid for the sign. I cannot be seen having this conversation. Oh, well, I can vouch for Anthony. And I could lose my job. Mr. Hamilton, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just need to know that if I choose to make a bid, that it'll be successful. The bids are sealed. If yours is the highest, you win. That's not what I asked. Just answer the man's question, please, Richard. I have a window of an hour between collecting the bids and then being presented to the board during which time they can be massaged a little. Now we have a new problem. Since the press started nosing around, we've had to bring the day forward. The board want to present this to the city as a done deal when they meet the day after tomorrow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. You said we had two weeks. It's out of my hands. It's political now. Your bid needs to be in by 10 a.m. the day after tomorrow. I want to know what you've got on this Hamilton guy. What do you mean? I have bribed, blackmailed, and backstabbed my way into $30 million, and I can tell you, you don't do that without recognizing the signs of a man who's being forced into something he doesn't want to do. Yeah, well, that's my business. No, it's not. Not if I'm putting up five and a half million dollars plus. see how you got his undivided attention. You guys play dirty. I like that. He's got a wife and four kids. He's more frightened of her seeing these than he is of the commission finding out he's fixing the bids. Who is the girl? I am. Hello. You must be Anthony. Now this is Rachel. And she's our ace in the hole. Well, I am pleased to make your acquaintance. <laughs> but what I don't understand is why have they kept you hidden? <laughs> uh, well, I think they were waiting to see if I needed to work on you. Hell. Now you tell me. <laughs> all right, you two. Knock it off. Plenty time to play when all of this is done. I'm having an engineer flown in to take a closer look at the sign. Why? Well, I am having the sign taken down and shipped to Texas. Now, I'm going to need somebody to show me how to do that. Well, I'll talk to Hamilton. 
So we're done? Yeah, we're done. See you in the morning, fellas. Well, we're going to need to get permission. And how? I am so sorry. It was inconvenient. I know. And, and that's why I insisted that I come here in person. What must you think of us? So the interview's been cancelled? Oh, uh, no. Heavens, no. But I told them. I said there is no way that you would want to be involved after being treated so shoddily. So they've got someone from the Chamber of Commerce as a last-minute replacement. The Chamber of Commerce? I know, very much second best, but we have to have something before we leave tomorrow. I, I mean, if I thought just for one second that you'd still be interested, I would leap at the chance. It's such a bloody shame, too, because, well, it's going to be quite a big documentary. It'll be run across most of the world. Even some of the networks over here have shown an interest. Well, uh, misunderstandings happen. I understand that. Are you saying that you might still be interested? I think so. Oh, this is wonderful. They'll be absolutely thrilled. So do you know which of the networks are interested? All of them, I think. Hello, Michael. You're not going to believe this, but Richard has agreed to do the interview after all. I know, isn't it fantastic? Oh, I'll just check. Um, they want to do it up by the sign. Get a shot of you, standing under it like a guardian angel. I could uh, maybe lean against the H. H for Hamilton. Perfect. That's fine, Michael. Go ahead. You make the arrangements. OK. Toodle tip. Right. 8.30 tomorrow morning for your makeup call. Okay. I need to send a small crew up ahead of us just to get things ready. Do you think you can arrange that? I'll have Janet give you passes when you leave. Super. <laughs> well, you go and it to Danny. He's pulled out all the stops. Well, I never doubted he would. You know we're going to get the leader thing again at the end of all this. Listen, if he pulls this off, he deserves it. And tease him for a bit longer first. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> right. Do you know anything else, mate? Only it's been music from the movies. Two nights in a row now. I mean, I know we're in Hollywood. Great, but you can't have too much of a good thing. Lead now. <sighs> Come on then. What? Admit it. Admit that I am a genius. No, you've uh, you've done good, Danny. No, I want the old thing. I want a sentence including the word. Genius. You're a genius. Yeah. I know. You've come a long way. Just one question. If I was leader, do you think that Stacey would shag me? I don't think he's gonna like that. Oh, never mind him. <laughs> so, we all set for tomorrow. Don't worry, babe. All up here, boxed off. Good. <laughs> <laughs>
Good morning, fellas. Hey. How you doing? Rachel? I just wanted to see it close up. I hope you don't mind. Hell no. It can only improve the view as far as I'm concerned. Well, there she is. Beautiful thing. Great. Let's go. Ah, uh, can we uh, hold on a minute? I'm waiting for that engineer I told you about. He had an errand to run. Otto, everyone, this is Otto. I have the big ideas. He makes them happen. Wow. This is something. Yes, it is. This time tomorrow, it could be all yours. Wesley's Hollywood. It has a nice ring to it. You seen enough? Maybe. That's right. Are you with the BBC? I've come to make you beautiful. <laughs> Didn't like him much before. Can't wait to take his money now. He's playing the big man. I got him stitched up like a kipper. OK. What do you say we uh, go back to the hotel, grab a few beers? I'll be able to celebrate. And what would we be celebrating, exactly? You having a winning bid at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Well, I can understand why I'd be celebrating, but uh, where do you fellas come in? Not with you. That's exactly right. What? Well, I want to thank you so much, though, for taking me this far. I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> All right, hang on a minute. What are you saying? The deal was off? I guess I am. But what about the sign? Oh, I'll put my bid in. But I don't need you to control Hamilton. I can do that myself, and I can save myself a hell of a lot of money. Uh -huh. Otto, the errand that Otto was running was going to your hotel room and finding the photos and the memory card. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You see, uh, that's how I got to where I am. Let's face it, no one ever accused me of being nice. So much for having him tied up in knots. Now, don't blame yourself, Danny. Like the poet said, shit happened. Yeah, well, I'm not giving up. There's nothing we can do. Yes, there is. There's always something you can do. Leave it, Danny. What's he gonna do? Danny? Shit. What are you doing? Why well, take the pictures? I don't understand. Yeah? He takes the pictures so he can do his own deal. So? He still thinks Ash is Richard Hamilton. Now, just a few more minutes, and I'll have you looking like Orlando Bloom. <laughs> oh, excuse me, dear. Hello? Are they ready for me yet? Ash, why, get back to the sign commission. I'm so sorry, love. They're on their way down for you now. On them! I'll just go and park the car out of the way, all right? Yes! <laughs> Hello, Janet. This is Yvonne Morgan. Yeah, he's doing terribly well. Thing is, he's just remembered he asked a chap by the name of Anthony Wesley into the office this morning for a meeting. Could you ask him to wait? All right, I'll tell him. Thank you. Anthony Wesley, I'd like to see Mr. Hamilton. Uh, he's just stepped out, if you'd care to wait. Mr. Hamilton. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry, but I got nothing to say to you. 
Janet, I'm going straight back out again. Cancel all my appointments. But if anyone asks, you haven't seen me, okay? I think you're going to want to hear what I have to say to you. But, um, but I... I really think you should listen to me. I have the photographs. It's too late. She knows. Excuse me? My wife. She knows. So you and your friends can go screw yourself. Give him a couple of hours of stew on it, then we'll kick off with plan B. You and Stacey get set. Hello. I have a proposition for you if you're interested. I'm with Hamilton. We're at the Sunset Vista Motel. He's going to get some alcohol. Does Paul know you're here? Of course, this was his idea. I thought so. He's not very happy with you. Well, you can't blame a fellow for trying. <laughs> he understands that too. So what's the deal? Hamilton's a mess. His wife threw him out. Oh. Now, how did that happen, I wonder? Paul said you were clever. We had one more photo. We sent it to his wife. Paul guessed he'd come running to me. And he did. Well. That puts you in the driver's seat. I can make sure he goes back into work tomorrow morning and deals with the bid, just like we planned. Only this time, we need to give him a slightly different motivation. Oh. I've convinced him that we can start a new life, move away from here, set up home. And for that, we'll need cash. Lots of it. He'll make sure your bid for the sign wins just like before. You'll give us the finder's fee in cash. $500,000. Oh, let me guess, huh? When you get your hands on the money, you're gonna dump it. <laughs> just as soon as I can. You are nasty. I love that in a woman. Oh, Richard, good to see you. Honey, I talked to Mr. Wesley. It seems we might still be able to come to some arrangement. I, uh, I want the money in cash tomorrow morning before I go into the office. Hold on now. You want me to give you the money before you go to the office to check out the bids? How in the hell do I know you won't just hightail it out of town? I guess that's just a chance you'll have to take. For a half a million dollars? <laughs> Not a chance in hell. Take it or leave it. I'll leave it. OK? What is it you want? I bring the money to the office. Are you crazy? I'll give it to you in the parking lot. Then I can watch you go in and make sure you don't leave. He's not going to let me or the money out of his side. He's going to watch me go in the front. And you can be sure that Otto, the sidekick, will be waiting at the back. All right, so we've got to get you and the money out of the building without Wesley seeing us. Well, just make sure he doesn't come after us when he finds out Ash is gone. Yeah, not to mention not getting the Hollywood sign. Oh, I, I just don't think there's any way through this. 
Serious? Face it, Danny. Things haven't exactly gone smoothly, have they? We've just lurched from one disaster to another. And then where you start, Stace, OK? It's where you finish. Yeah, yeah, in jail at this rate. Well, thanks for the vote of confidence. I got you this far, and I? You know, I've got a bloke on the other side of town bringing us half a million dollars tomorrow. Whoa, whoa, Albert, what do you think? All right, it's been a rough ride. But remember, it was Danny's imagination that brought us here in the first place and kept us in the game when things went wrong. Look, it always boils down to the same two things. You roll the dice or you walk away. That's it. Well? Well, it was different when Mickey was here, wasn't it? We always knew everything would come good. Thanks for the better confidence. You stop the car. Danny! 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 I'm sorry. It's OK. No, it's not. No, it's, no, it's not. I shouldn't have said that. No, you're right. You're right, Stacey. I am just a jumped-up short-comp player. You know, the truth is, I'm completely out of my league here. I used to dream about all this. Leading my own crew, calling the shots. Making the plays. I don't know, Mickey, he just made it look so effortless. And so do you. Yeah, right. Look, you're not as smooth as Mickey. And things aren't as well planned. But he's still a bloody genius. When you say not as smooth... Danny... I'm being serious. You know, if I'm so good... How is it... that I haven't got a single... clue... about what we're gonna do tomorrow? You will. When it matters. Here's my bid. Have you got the money? Here.
what's going on? I don't know. They must have caught him tampering with the bids. What? They he caught hates. him! He hates Adrian! They took his fingerprints, so they have the money! They've got my money. Don't. He made me! It's him! I'm getting out of here. I've never seen that man before in my life. Don't mind him, sir. Get in the car. You can tell us all about it down at the station. Well, as soon as my doctor here told them about the mix-up with my medication, they, uh, they couldn't wait to get rid of me. <laughs> God bless America. Well, you actually bloody did it. Hi, I'm just waiting for someone. Weren't you here the other day with the film crew? Must have been my brother. From England. I don't know. Just like Jello on spring. Wesley, he made me do it. I'll tell you everything. I never saw him before in my life. And that's not a woman, that's a man. Yeah, he made me do it. I'll make a statement. All right. That's he made me do no, it. Turn around. Uh, they're all con men. I said turn they around. They all made me do it. They paid me to steal the sign. Bob, grab the case. Uh, Settle uh, down. Uh, 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 get your goddamn hands up. They must have caught him tampering with the bids. What? They caught him! They've got my money. I'm getting out of here. Anthony Wesley! There he is! I've never seen that man before in my life. You know, you are talking to a man who has laughed in the face of death, sneered at doom, and chuckled at catastrophe. What? The Wizard of Oz. Ah, well, in that case, there is no place like home. I have to add it to you, Danny. That was bloody genius, mate. Yes, it was, wasn't it? I called his hotel. They said he got a car to the airport. Yeah, well, you should have seen his little face when the police pulled Ash out. Uh yeah, well, couldn't happen to a nicer bloke, could it, eh? Uh, there is one other little thing we've got to sort out. What's that? Well, 
I seem to remember we did say that we'd sort out the leadership after we'd done the deal. And as Stacey's now sitting next to half a million big ones, I thought, now might be a good time. Ah, uh, here we go. No, oh, come on, fair is fair. Did I or did I not deliver the goods? Yes, you did, yes. OK, all those in favour of me being elected leader, please put your hands up. Only joking! <laughs> well, I made that unanimous then.